And I was walking through Germany when um, I came past this, and at the same time I was writing this code. And this is a, a DOM in German. So a DOM, XML, yeah, okay. It's very obscure. Is it running? Excellent. Okay. Yes, welcome to this uh, presentation. Um, we're going to talk about programmer friendly XML and C. C11. You need to have some new features of the C language to use the features that I'm going to talk about. And uh, what we're going to talk about is a way of writing C that you can have a safe writing of XML so that you're sure that you are writing valid XML, which is kind of a problem at the moment. So, ODF is XML, as you all know, and here's a small fragment of XML from ODF. Uh, this will going to be, is going to be our example in this presentation. So what we're doing here is we make a date style, which we call a minimum year, and it will uh, show the year with a less than sign in front of it, and it should be bold. So we're going to, this is a very simple thing we want to do. And uh, here you can see it in action, in calc. Um, yeah, so now in this, in this presentation, we're going to be writing this fragment using C code. <clears throat> the ODS specification has something to say about this element, right? Number, date, style. Well, it can be used in automatic styles, it can have a number of attributes, it can have a number of child elements. This is what the programmers are reading when they're, when they're writing the software. Right? Uh, this is human readable and it's derived from a schema, the Relax G schema, which we uh, use to specify uh, the ODF file format. Um, who, who of you has ever seen the Relax G? Two guys. Three guys. Okay, yeah. So, what are we doing here? We are defining something called number date style, which is this element. And this element can have, for example, style text properties, but they're optional. And it can have a number text element, which is also optional. Um, but what's not optional is one or more of any date. And any date is defined somewhere else, and this is, uh, can be year or uh, month uh, components of a way to style a date. So, this kind of XML defines how the ODF XML is written. Um, so what can you do with RelaxNG? A number of things. So you define what the element names are, you can define what the attribute names are, the nesting which is allowed, so a head has to go into an HTML, and a body has to go after a head, and a DC date, which is part of ODF, has to be a valid date string, so the data type is defined, and the, for attributes also, this show has to be a Boolean value, for example. All of these things are specified in the RelaxNG. So you think, oh nice, so we have a file which is computer readable, which you can use to uh, validate a document. And that's what we do, we have ODF validators, they use the RelaxNG and they check if, if everything is okay. Well, let's try to write out this example which we had. Here is a very simple API for writing, um, writing XML. So, write start element, and then we have a string with the Q tag, then another element, we write the attribute, we write the start element, then we write out uh, this form here, and then we close the elements. Um, I wrote here the nine errors. Can you, anybody spot at least one of them? Any errors, yes? Yes, I'm missing an end element, exactly. However, this will compile, right? You'll only see this problem at runtime. Another error? The nine in there, eight left. Ah, I'm using font weight heavy, but it should be bold. Okay, these are all the errors. If, you, if I would run this code, I would get this. So I, missed, I misspelled this element name. I'm using the wrong namespace here. This is not escaped. This is wrong nesting. It should go behind, not inside. Um, 
This is a missing element, number year, has to be there. So, nine errors in, in just seven lines of code. Wow. And the compiler just takes it, it likes it, no problem. Now, if I translate this to a LibreOffice API, it has some sanity checks. So, then I only get six errors left because I'm using these constants here, so I can't mistype the element name. That's a win, so that's good. But still, seven, six errors left in only six lines of code. Wow. That's pretty, pretty bad. So, how can we improve this? Here is another way in which we could write the XML. It's uh, a special syntax. This is the element we want to write, and this is the C++. Well, it looks a bit crazy, I guess. Um, it looks almost the same as the XML, because we are using operator overloading. But what you see here is number date style, and here is also number date style. Here is a style name with a string to it. Um, text properties is defined, number text, and here I am uh, sending this one character as a literal string into the stream. So this is a different way of writing our C++ code, which will actually validate at compiler time that I am following the ODF specification. Now let's compare this to the, um, the LibreOffice code if it would be correct, right? So the example I gave previously had six arrows in it. Um, now I uh, made it correct, and then it looks like this. So it's very long. To be honest, I find it quite ugly. Um, and this is what you would have with lazy, just as we had on the previous slide. Other questions so far, because there's a lot of code fragments here. So if you have any question, just feel free to ask it. Um, so now I'm going to go into a bit of how this actually works. Why, how can I write this like this? Here's a, a more simple example. In the HTML, with just the body element, okay, that's invalid, but I want to keep the example simple. This is the C++ code. So first, we have to find somewhere in an include header uh, a, an HTML object. And this, inside of this type, there is the actual tag name. So the namespace and the string HTML. And the same for this body here. So I create a sync, and the sync has to be for an HTML document. This type is also defined in the header. And I pass an output stream into it. Then, this is actually, uh, this is the start of the line, and here at the semicolon is the end. So I indented it to look like XML. So I start with the sync, then the HTML object goes into the sync, then the body goes into the sync, then the hello stream goes in, and we close the body and we close the HTML. Now if I, each of these steps, if I write them out, I get something like this. So I'm starting with the HTML sync, then if I put the HTML into the sync, I get a second sync, which is an HTML sync. And the HTML sync will only accept uh, things that are allowed in there. So it will accept the body. But if I try to put an HTML inside the HTML, I will get a compiled error. So I go through all these things, and in the end, I end up again with the HTML document sync. So each step here changes the sync. It puts type information in the sync so that the compiler will check that all the uh, nesting is valid. And the um, so here I put the whole uh, the XML writing on one line, and this is more a traditional way of writing the uh, the operators for left and uh, for smaller than and greater than. And these are the this is the implementation for it. Um, so what you see here, the operator gets the HTML doc sync, it gets the tag which is the HTML, and in the back it just starts the element and it returns the new sync. Then this HTML sync goes in here, and it gets a body tag. And it writes a start element, and returns another sync. Then, 
This one accepts text. I'm using just a, a character string here, but you could be using something else. That writes the characters, and then also returns a body sync again. The body sync can be closed um, with, with the tag again, with the bigger than, uh, with the smaller than operator. So it calls an element, and this is sync based. So this is the actual implementation. You don't need to see this normally, right? So this is just to explain how this works. How can you use this? Well, LibreOffice has um, its own um, function. Uh, sorry, it has its own class for doing the exporting, and you can wrap that in this class. And here are the functions which you're currently using in LibreOffice. So the start element, the end element, add attribute, and character writing. These are all inline functions, so this is just compile time features. It, when you're compiling, you're checking the, tag, the types, and you're making sure that you're not writing invalid ODF, but uh, the binary will be still the same. Here is a uh, large example that shows how to use functions. Um, I'll go through this slowly. Still no questions? No, you're still actually still looking at the slides, so that's good. Nobody's really falling asleep yet. Good. Uh, it's not going to get more complicated than this one. So this is the this is the worst thing I'm going to do. Uh, I want to write a, a function to create a document. So I want a queue DOM well, a, a DOM document out of this. I'm passing a title and a list of paragraphs, which are just strings. So I create a builder, I do an HTML start, head, a title, and then I pass a string in, close it, close the head, start the body, and then here I do create paragraphs, and I pass the list of paragraphs. What this does is it calls this functor here, which accepts a sync, any sync, and loops over the strings and puts them one by one in a paragraph element. It's just this P here. Because I, I'm using the namespace XHTML, I can just write P. And the text goes in, I close the element again, and then at the end I have a sync which I return. So the sync then goes into this body, and the body is closed, the HTML is closed, and I have created uh, an HTML document. So this is not writing to a string, this is creating a document live. So the same way of writing can be used in two ways. Okay, well, that's basically it. Um, I didn't go into, I would, well, I could have put a lot more interesting details of the implementation in here with a lot of cool C++ uh, 11 features, but I thought that would be a bit too much. Uh, there's already a lot of code fragments in here right now. Um, so, yeah, what, what, what do we have now? We have a very small C++ header library. It's called Blazium, and when you convert your RNG to a header file, you can have XML validation at compile time. So instead of having to call the ambulance, we actually have a seatbelt which prevents invalid ODF at compile time. So it, this would really uh, let uh, uh, legal office developers sleep better at night, I think. Yeah, prevention is better than the cure, and be strict in what you create is the, the thought behind all of this. I have a longer write-down of what I'm explaining here on my blog, and the code is on GitHub. If somebody is interested in uh, reading it, or asking me uh, questions about how it works in more detail, or just in general, or make plans on how to start using this in LibreOffice, I'd be very open to this. That's it. Are there any questions? You are very clever, aren't you? Um, yeah, I can switch to the, uh, how much time is left? Oh, 15 minutes left? Wow, you can go through this. Um, <laughs> well, let's not do that. Um, hello? Shall I also explain how to actually convert the RNG to a header file? Yes? Okay. 
So I don't have slides for that, but I wrote it down. Um, let's see. Oh, I thought that F11 would be uh, maximizing. No. Does anybody know what the shortcut is to maximize this in uh, Windows? Or can help me with the Danish translation? Um, I want to maximize. Full scale. Um, Zoom, zoom uh, on the right side. Zoom on the right side. And then ah, the right side. Okay. yes. Okay, thanks. So, um, yeah, we did this part. So now the metaprogramming part of the whole thing. Uh, yes. Here we are defining. So this is using Qt as an example. Um, so that's slightly different from what LibreOffice has, but you can think of what the equivalent would be. Um, so here I am defining uh, a string for the HTML namespace, and this is a constant at compile time. So that's some optimization to make the code fast. Um, so this is the namespace, HTML, head, and you can think of the other tags yourself. Then I create HTML tag. So this is a type, it's an instantiation of a template. So there's an XML tag template, which gets uh, the type, which is QString in this case, but again, in LibreOffice you would put a different type here, and I pass it these constants. So then, this, this type has all the information it needs to write out uh, the XML Q name for it. Yeah, so now we are going to define the types of the tags, because a Q name is just that. It's a namespace and a string, but it's not necessarily always the same type. So HTML would have an HTML tag, uh, but it's a separate concept from the actual tag itself. So the HTML type has a lot of attributes. In this case, it's a tuple. <coughs> And the tuples are things that you can use at compile time in C++11. So it has an ID tag, which is just a string ID, and it has a class tag in this example. And here I define the image type, which has the tag image, and it has allowed attributes ID and class again, because they're allowed for all HTML elements, and it has required attributes, because it needs a source and it needs an alt. So if you try to compile code which doesn't define these, it will not compile. Now, we have to also define what the child elements are. An HTML can have a head element inside, and it can have a body element inside. I'm also defining this as a subtype within this structure uh, inside of this uh, yeah, this is a template, and I can instantiate the template. Um, so the syntax is not really that important, unless you're really into C++ metaprogramming. But what will happen is that at compile time, the compiler can figure out that in an HTML, I can have a head or a body. And for the image, nothing is allowed inside, so it's an empty tuple here. Yeah, so Blazing, it takes these structs to generate the right overloaded operators. Um, yeah, that's how you would write a header file from an RNG file, or from a DTD file, or an XML schema, it doesn't matter. But you just need to know what these rules are, and write them down as a header file. Yes, this is the same example we had before, and uh, future enhancements. So, I wrote this code on holiday, uh, and the next holiday, I will continue it. So for now, this is the state. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, XPath is a very popular, popular way of writing. And by doing more over operator overloading, I can get to C++ code, which looks a lot like XPath. 
which has actually syntax checking at compile time as well. But that's like thinking ahead quite far. So that's a bit, that's quite crazy and difficult. So um, the future enhancements are really like what kind of crazy things can we do as well. If you want to learn how to, how to program like this, I learned it from the, simply from uh, the Stroustrup C++ uh, book for the C++ 11 implementation, uh, version, of the, version of the language. And uh, yeah, are there questions about this? Yes? What are you using from your handle CD Kinka that's specifically 11? What are you using that's specifically 11? I don't see uh, variable templates. Yes, but well, yes. But then we go into the implementation of the header library. Okay. So we go in one level deeper still. Okay. Uh, that's why I'm using those. I'm okay. using variadic templates. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And if you, yeah, that's the main thing. That's the most important thing. Yeah. And that's, that's actually required to do this trick. So this here, this kind of initialization of the functor, that's actually C++11 also. Um, what other C++11 features are here? No, that's it. Yeah. The tuples of variable length. Yes, you're right. Yeah. The tuples are in the background using the variadic tem templates. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Does uh, I'm just thinking about the voltage you would use this by the office. Does the latest version of Studio have that? Of, uh, of uh, the last time I looked, it didn't have that. It didn't have very active templates? Last time I looked, it does. It does now. The, the 13 version is enough for what we now. use in the raw okay. Okay. What we use, okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's take a poll after all the difficult stuff. Who thinks this is a good idea for the office? <laughs> or that, or that. <laughs> well, it just takes one crazy guy to make it, right? But he's probably overloading other things. <laughs> I should have asked who thinks it's a bad idea. Ah, so one against zero. Excellent. <laughs> oh, it's great giving talks in the morning after a party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could really manipulate the public. Well, how ready was the holiday anyway? <laughs> how? Uh, how ready? Yeah, no, it was during the day I was walking and dreaming about all this kind of stuff, and then in the evening, write a bit of code every day. It's not really a lot of code, actually. Why should I be happy? Yes, she was as well. So it's it didn't really take that much time. It's just once you come up with this, with the crazy idea of overloading the operators, uh, the rest just flows naturally. There's one thing, sometimes there's an extension attribute which is not in the schema but still has to be written out. How are you doing this? In, sometimes there's an, a new feature which is not in the standard yet but has to be prototyped. Yes, then you then you use a schema with the extension. Alright. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So the office has extensions, right. so they would use the extended relaxing for the to, to create the header. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So similar code like this is, is already in Caligula, but without this nice syntax. So this, uh, two years ago I did something like this for Caligula, and then, oh, then I was using uh, this syntax, which is still quite ugly, um, to, to write, the, write the code. So yeah, this is much nicer, at least in my opinion. Um, yeah. If you really want to have challenging uh, so you're looking at uh, uh, at C meta programming. This is also an interesting write-up. I'm not going to go through this now, but you can translate Haskell directly to C++. And that's actually Haskell is very short, very compact, and the C++ is much more syntax, but it means the same thing. So if you know a bit of Haskell, it's quite easy to write this stuff. Um, and for implementing, actually, also checking the order of the elements, um, this is going to be uh, necessary. Because checking the order, so checking that the head comes before the body, is not, that's not checked right now. So that's one of the uh, possible extensions here. But that's going to take some, uh, well, some complicated hacking. Well, a very long holiday. Maybe, maybe pension. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, well, that's it. Thank you for your attention.